What's up, everybody? My name is Juliana Pena. I am filling in for Jason Brandstetter. Um, today we have our special guest, Alex Spanos. He is the assistant strength and conditioning trainer for the Northwestern football team. Alex, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Thank you for being here. Juliana, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we're excited to have you. So um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions. You know, I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but I did want to get started on, on how you even got started in strength and conditioning. What led you down this path? I mean, being an assistant strength and conditioning trainer to Northwestern football team is kind of a big deal. Um, and that's really exciting that you get to do that every day. So is this something you're passionate about? Is this something that you knew that you wanted to do as a, as a little kid? Uh, going back to 2013, once I found out that the profession even existed, that there's strength coaches just for football, it kind of tied every world together that I love very much and I've always had a strong passion for developing people mentally and physically and I felt like once I got my foot in the door at Northwestern it's such a special place with the culture and I've been under the right people and the best mentors I could possibly ever have so I'm just very thankful that I had the opportunity and I knew after my my first hour in Northwestern's facility um, under my head strength coach Jay Hooten and under coach Fitz and everybody that I worked with that's what I wanted to do and it's it's crazy because the motivation grows more and more every single day nice so like are you like the baby the oldest do you have siblings like strength and conditioning is kind of like a thing that you have to be motiv motivated for every single day like did you have like parents that lifted weights or big brothers or anything like that that kind of got you into this you know lifting weights and, and being in strength and conditioning no of course that's a great question i had uh parents that came from greece and worked every day awesome. told me they didn't have time to work out they just worked yeah and uh my brother is nine years older than me, okay. so he's always been a, a big role model for me, and I just used to get the shit beat out of me every day in a good way, because I deserved it, <laughs> and so it always got me excited to, when it was time, to hit the weights, hit them really, really hard, and I never looked back. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I understand that. I'm the baby of four. My brothers and sisters go. beat the crap out of me, too, so I'm like, thanks, guys. <laughs> you guys gave me a career. Thank you so much. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here we uh, we do a lot of boxing here, Gregory Boxing. Um, Coach Wayne and Coach Jason, they have like a perfect formula for us to get ready and, and sharpen up our hands. But one of the things that I think everybody needs to, to work on and something that Wayne's always asking of me is like, explode, explode. And I'm like, I can't explode. I don't know how to explode anymore. Like, what? I don't know how to do this. So like, do you have any tips for, for me and for the people here? Because I know that if I have to work on it, that means that everybody has to work on it, especially as a professional uh, fighter. And I'm just trying to figure out like, how can I develop this explosion? So is there any tips that you might have? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, starting in the weight room and developing a really, really great foundation of strength will definitely help you to become more explosive. And, so do I need uh, to like run more, like on the treadmill or like It would be more it would be more lifting. Okay. You know, lifting, running a well balanced program that incorporated everything. Okay. Right. So a strong foundation that would put yourself in a good position to build durability and to provide great strength. And then once you had great strength, progressing into explosive strength and developmental power. Okay. Um, it's a great question because with fighters, typically, you know, fighters growing up, they train all the time in their sport, they spar, and I think that a lot of room that can be improved on is actually developing strength and power in the weight room to help your fighting, to supplement it, to assist it. Yeah. So we have like, you know, various things here in the gym, you know, there's, there's some weights and there's like, you know balls and stuff like what types of equipment around this gym do you think that they could use to try to build that explosion med balls was a great point you nailed it on the head yeah we built great uh great explosion with med balls with bands with the dumbbells that we have here i mean just like fighting it's all about weight transfer right yeah so before you know being a master of your body and learning how to transfer your weight within yourself before you add a med ball before you add any resistance any bands any weights um it, it can start with, with, with body weight, uh, plyometrics and body weight drills that could just get you going and building a strong foundation and then progressing into those things. Yeah. And when you have access to a weight room or you have weights in here or you have, you know, you, you go to a weight room with a, with a strength coach, then you're guided in the right direction on how to supplement all the training you're doing in here because you want to make sure that the burners aren't on high in both ends in the weight room and in the gym where you're fighting at. If you were to do a lot of volume lifting and a lot of volume training, you could set yourself up to a bad position yeah. because you're going so hard in both, right? right? So it's kind of 
one of those things when you're far out from fighting and you're far out from the competition event, you can be more involved in the weight room and build a strong foundation to get very, very strong. As you're getting closer to your fight, that's somewhere where you want to taper a little bit and balance progressing the volume and deloading the volume in the lifting yeah. and getting more explosive power but controlling the volume, yeah. increasing the intensity as your training in the in the gym goes up. Yeah. Sparring and, and that sort of thing. So okay, so bear with me. I'm just a dumb fighter. I don't know anything. So yeah. uh, with a box like a plyometrics that you're saying, so maybe like jumping from like the ground and on top of the box would be able to help me build explosion in my feet. Yeah, like I that. love I love these questions. I really do. Yeah. Um, honestly, explosive. It, it, it's all going to start from the ground up. Yeah. Right. So if we do have access to a box and we have something that that we can step off of. Yeah. When you think of explosive power starting from the ground, you want to think of your body weight absorbing the ground force, the yeah. force coming from the ground, your body absorbing that, yeah. and then producing power through the ground. Okay. And trying to make that ground contact time as minimal as possible. Okay. And the way you do that is by training, right? So I would start off with depth drops, stepping off of a box and landing in a really good athletic position, bending your knees, sinking your hips a little bit, yeah. and allowing your body to just absorb your own body weight falling from a height yeah. and increasing that height yeah. and then going into explosive jumping. Yeah. And it's something that just like anything else, when done the right way, it progresses and it takes time. Yeah. But when you train fast and you train explosively in the weight room, yeah. you will see tremendous gains in your punching power and your kicks and overall body control, which is the overall goal for yeah. fighters. That's great. Yeah, I, I love doing that kind of stuff. Like I you're getting me doing... ready to work out. Yeah, right? I know, I'm like just, I'm, the med ball, I'm you know, to like energy. slamming it up against it the wall. The exactly, yes, I love that kind of stuff. That's great. That's awesome. So that's that's something that, you know, I'll keep in mind because uh, of, of course, as a fighter, if I need to work on it, a lot of other people, especially here, learning the fundamentals, it could definitely improve their game as well, so. I was gonna ask you on how to learn how to fight. Yeah, done. By watching <laughs> you, I just, I gotta get more familiar with my, my left hook. My I'm moves. still I'm still working on it with Wayne. Um, okay, so sometimes a fighter needs to put on ten pounds. It can be for various reasons, like they're fighting, you know, Goliath. Um, moving up <laughs> uh, weight class or the money is, or yeah, if they have to go to a higher weight class because you know, I, I'm facing this problem right now. So the girl that I want to fight, I want to fight at 135. She doesn't want to come down and, and fight at 135 because she's been fighting at 145. So now they're offering it for me at 145, but I walk at like 143. Okay. And so it's like, I, you know, do I take it because the money is better and because she wants to fight me at 145? Or do I say, you know, you haven't defended your belt at 135 in over two years, so you need to come down um, and fight and defend at 135. So that's that's kind of the negotiation yeah, that well, we're at. Right. But if I were to go up and wait, you know what I mean? Sometimes physics plays a part in a fight, you know what 100%. I mean? It's like, it's the punching power, the explosiveness and stuff like that. Right. So to make it a more of an even playing field, I would want her to come down. But let's just say, for example, that I can't. How can I put on 10 pounds of effective weight where I'm not going to be slow, I'm still going to be explosive, you know, how, yeah, how do you do that? Just slam protein shakes all day. Slam protein <laughs> shakes. I, honestly, it's all about Egg a, a well-balanced a well program, right? Yeah. And to gain the weight that you need, you want to gain lean muscle mass. You don't have any room to gain any bad weight. So honestly, just like anything else, like I said before, it's a progression of 0.5 to one pound a week would put you in the best position, Yeah. right? So like, if you're looking at camp, yeah. six to eight week camp, yeah. um, you know, the max you wanna gain is two pounds in a week. Yeah. With that, you still might get some weight that you don't want right. necessarily, right? So I would recommend a half a pound yeah. to anywhere from a pound and a half to two pounds a week, yeah. but you'd be the most comfortable if you started earlier, yeah. right? If you made this decision early, yeah. cause you wouldn't be fighting until, yeah. let's say September, yeah. right? And, um, you could get a really good head start on it saying, all right, I'm gonna gain a half a pound to a pound a week. Yeah. Let's start this 10 weeks in advance, 12 weeks in advance. But I would actually start it earlier because you want your body to be comfortable with that weight. Sure. You don't want to put weight on too quick. Right. You see that problem a lot where um, all athletes in general, they just have to put on weight quick. And when they run and they do a lot of things, their body's unfamiliar with that weight that they're putting on so fast, yeah. something usually gives out. So. Not only are we focusing a lot in the weight room, like what can we do in the weight room to supplement you gaining weight? There's a lot we can do, right? We can focus on hypertrophy and put you under strict uh, training guidelines that will help you get there. 
but you have to be unbelievable with following your nutrition to a T. Count out everything, follow yeah. a plan, yeah. right? So that, that leads to my next question. So with proteins, there's so many proteins on the block, you know, and I can only take, you know, NSS certified types of proteins, yeah, there but there go. is some other stuff like um, IsoPure, for example. It's like no carbs. I love IsoPure. Yeah, I love IsoPure because there's no carbs, right? So, but like, are we promoting them right now? No, no, we're not. <laughs> but so, like, for example, if I'm trying to put on 10 pounds, yeah. like, am I drinking ISO pure or am I drinking like a more, you know, like a regular whey protein from like Thorn or something like that? That is not. Thorn's great too. Yeah, Thorn's great too. Yeah. But I mean, it does have like the carbs and stuff yeah, like that. ISO pure is more like no carbs, there's like nothing in it basically. That's it's like drinking water. Right. That's a great question. Um, which which the protein most, do I take? Well, the most important thing is to. You, you want to get the majority of your proteins from actual food. Right, like right. You want the essential amino acids. It's got to be... Like nutrient-dense foods, like nutrient whole foods. Nutrient-dense foods, whole foods, yeah. right? And that's why when you hear the, the the chicken, the eggs, the fish, you know what I mean? All the stuff to get excited about. Yes. Right? Um, you want the essential amino acids, whole, complete proteins. And if it's right before a workout yeah. and you don't want to eat a meal, obviously, then there's different ways to you know have one-third of your protein shake before a workout finish two thirds right after, eat a full meal 30 minutes after that, right? It's all part of a really, really strict plan. Yeah. Um, protein shakes are unbelievable supplements to help your nutrition out. Yeah. I wouldn't rely heavily dependent on them. Right. But between isopure and thorn, it's gonna be, you know, whatever you prefer. Yeah. And that's, that's a great thing. Like for me, when I'm trying to gain weight, something that has worked for me is eating every two to three hours, yeah. taking in anywhere from 35 to 40 grams of protein, and it's all about hitting that total amount of protein at the end of the day, right? Like, am I hitting that 220 grams of protein every single day? If I went one weekend where I missed two meals in a day or in a row, then I wouldn't gain weight. And everything I did that week would feel like it went to waste. So I was the weirdo. If I was out at a bar, um, I would have, you know, a protein bar in my back pocket and I'm chugging waters the whole yeah. night. Like that's, but you have to be obsessed. Right. You gotta be obsessed to be great and you have to do things that you haven't done to get to where you haven't been. Yeah. That so discipline. along with lifting, you got to take your nutrition really serious. It's, it's exciting. So now how how important is it to be drinking that protein shake right after you get done working out? Or is it like very a important. waste yeah, of very, time if, you know, important. you wait two hours and then you go home and then you go drink it? Like, it's almost like a waste, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you have no. to get it in right after you're done working out. It won't be a waste, but there's a 45-minute window, if not even smaller. more. Than, yeah, smaller where you want to get that in as soon as possible because you completely tore up your muscle fibers, um, you need your glycogen and your carbs and you need your protein immediately after. And that's the thing that people, um, you know, different diets work well for different athletes and right. different people all around. And it's important to know what works for you. Like you gotta, you know your body better than anybody else, right? right? And it's gonna be up to you to kind of dabble around, try different things, do your research, get guidance from great experts in the field. Like I'm not a nutrition expert, so, I can't provide the best, um, but I work with really, really good nutritionists at Northwestern, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to be around really good people that have guided me and the athletes that I work with in a great direction. And people get away from, oh my God, I'm trying to cut weight or I'm trying to gain weight, but I don't want to have too many carbs because I don't want to put on bad weight. Right. But realistically, it's completely false. You know, like carbohydrates are a really important role in our bodies, and especially when you're putting in the work that you put in. Right. I mean. I've seen you fight, yeah. how explosive you are and how hard you hit and the way that you honestly move and, and your, your power, you have to have a lot of carbohydrates when you're training yeah. and when you're fighting. Yeah, you no, know? absolutely. I can't make it to my next practice without, you know, getting some sort of carbs. Gotta feel right, yeah, gotta feel right. Sweet potatoes are my best friend. There you go. Um, let's move on. So, uh, let's see, you've been around uh, combat gyms for some time now and even implement some uh, combat training at Northwestern. Do you guys do? Yeah, of do course, absolutely. you guys do combat absolutely. training at Northwestern? Our guys are athletes. They get after it. Yeah? When the mitts come out, they all get jacked up and they tear up my rotator cuffs every damn day <laughs> because they want to put the gloves on. Yeah. You know, like, I don't want them to hold the gloves for each other because they're really powerful yeah. to their credit. Yeah. Um, they work really hard and they're very powerful. And if one of them catches a punch not in the right position, you know, the rotator, rotator cuff is gone. So yeah. I'll take the beating and I'm, yeah. I'm usually the one that can't bench because my rotator cuffs are shot. Yeah, no, it sucks too because sometimes it. you hyperextend your arm because somebody doesn't know how to hit. It works. You're just like, oh, so then you're pissed. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so knowing what combat gyms look like and what's inside, uh, what should a fighter do or add to his training to improve strength and conditioning? I think fighters should, again, know what works best for their body, 
see where they're at, right? Like if you're in a position where you got to gain weight, you want to gain 10 pounds, then I think supplementing your routine with, a, you know, a really, really good lifting program would benefit you greatly, right. especially when it's done the right way. Right. You don't want to do it the wrong way. You don't want to just walk into a gym and guess and check and see what works. You know what I mean? You want to put yourself in a position where you're on somewhat of a program that's going to, you know, get you to where you got to get to. And, that, and, and if it's gaining 10 pounds, then you're going to be doing maybe a little bit more volume. You so, know, and, but do you think that these people in here, me particularly, can get that type of program done without being in a regular lifting gym? I think that you could definitely do things here that are going to help you and guide you in the right direction. But I think being, you know, in, in a facility or like an supplement or this, something. not just an export, even, you know, like anything, a, a barbell or any kind of gym that you have access to. Yeah where you could do traditional weightlifting, power developmental exercises with the barbell and start incorporating that as well. Nice. Um, if you didn't have access to that, yeah. we can of course figure it out, yeah. you know, no problem. Yeah. But it's always good to encourage that type of thing because yeah. it can really help. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hit up all the gyms out here. I'm looking for a gym sponsorship if anybody I wants to. I got you right here. If anybody wants to let me in their weight room. We, we got you, know. we'll take care of you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, what is your, okay, so I, they showed me a video of you. Okay. like who, who, who did that? Yeah, no, Jason and Wayne, like Jason you're ripping Wayne. your shirt off like the Hulk, right. you're dancing on the sidelines, you're going crazy. Like, it, how did that come about? Like, where is, where is that coming from? Um. That comes from within, right? Yeah. Like all the guys that I am so lucky to work with, I, I love the players that I coach. Sure. As a strength staff, we're so lucky to have the guys that we coach. And right. it's kind of like, you know, when you're waking up at three in the morning, four in the morning, and these guys are coming in every single day, you develop real relationships with them. Right. You know, you we spend, as strength coaches, we spend more time with the athletes than anybody else. Right, you're invested. So you, you're all in. Yeah. All in, all gas, no breaks, yeah. right? And the shirt that I'm wearing right now, right? If you're juiceless, you're useless. That's <laughs> one of my best friends, Joe, that, you know, unfortunately um, passed away tragically. Uh, I'm so sorry. He's, but he was the absolute best and he lived every day of his life with the utmost enthusiasm. Yeah. You know, and I believe that nothing great can be accomplished without great enthusiasm. And uh, when these guys are walking in every single day, it's not just a workout where they walk in, break a sweat, and walk out feeling good. And like, yeah. oh, I got my workout in, right? Yeah. It's training. You right. know how training is. Yeah. You're going to walk in there. Sometimes it's going to be monotonous. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to be repetitive. Right. Sometimes you're not going to want to put the weight on your back or do the runs that you have to. Right. And it's up to that culture that you walk into every day to kind of take you where you can't take yourself. Right. And that's why it's so exciting. Like, I'm so lucky to be with these kids and be with these men and, and, and people in general that are mentally and physically just breaking through every barrier in front of them. Right. And I get, we're lucky enough on game day, we get to walk out with them in the tunnel. Yeah. And they get to go do their thing on the field with all the coaches on the sideline and showcase all the hard work. So, you know, I, I played at Harvard Community College. I played at Robert Morris University where we had 50 people in the stands. And it was up to us to bring our own juice, nice. to bring our passion. Yeah. And so to be quite honest, like Coach Fitz, um, at Northwestern, his energy is second to none. Yeah. His passion is second to none, and Coach Hewitt, the head strength coach, is the same way. So the expectation there is to live with great enthusiasm and great passion, and to bring that because it's contagious, yeah. right? There's enough negativity in the world where if you get focused on that, it can be very counterproductive. Right. And, um, so honestly, on the sideline, it's so easy to get lost in the moment. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But you should see the juice that goes on every single day. Right. Because in the weight room, it's crazier than it is on game day. Nice. So that's got to be a lot awesome. of fun. You got to come check it out. Yeah. The guys would be so jacked up if you came back. I, I can I can tell from my own experience. I'm all about energy, and I'm all about like gratefulness and making sure that the energy around me is good. And and so I can I can feel that from you. I can feel that there's great energy I'm in it there. Too. I'm it too. I, I can feel there's great energy in the room, and that you're very grateful and appreciative of the job that you have. And that's great to see, you know, because it sucks some people that have jobs that they they hate. They're not passionate about it it's not something that they love they do it because they have to but we're lucky enough to actually you know do jobs that like we love to wake up and do we're passionate about it and and I think that's a beautiful thing that that we get to um, enjoy that and that's great energy and, and the universe hears us and so it's, it's 100%. a good thing and, and I think for us too especially for you yeah you're so used to wanting more and not being complacent right, right. so you always strive to get more and to get more and to get more but it's so important to not get lost in the moment or oh, I'm sorry not look ahead too much 
and to get lost in the moment and to realize where you are at what given time and how special it is to really embrace that opportunity that you're currently in. Right. Because we're always looking ahead. Yeah. We always want the next challenge. Right, right. Right. But it's important to live fullest at the very moment that you're in. Right, exactly. Because one day it's going to pass us by and we're going to be like, I should have, would have, could have. You 100%, know what I mean? And like, 100%. you, you got to get it in now while you can. And it, it takes a special type of athlete, football players, fighters. It takes a special athlete to walk through this fire that most people aren't willing to walk through. And, you know, you got to know whether you got that or whether you don't got that. And right. these football players are going in and they're getting in a literal car crash every single play. You know yep. what I mean? It's like there's nothing more intense than football in that. And you, you know, shake it off and get ready it, to do it again. Exactly. And so they have my utmost respect. And I think that, you know, NFL or football in general is one of the hardest sports out there. And, and I definitely think that, you know, they deserve every every bit of respect that they get. Well, listen, I honestly, coming from them, from the guys that I coach every single day, um, fighters deserve the utmost respect. You guys yeah. are the modern day gladiators, yeah. and the energy system demands that your body requires you to perform at the highest level is unbelievable, and it takes really, 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 really hard work and consistent preparation. Right. I mean, you can't just walk in on fight night and hide. Yeah. If you didn't do the work, yeah. you get exposed. Yeah. And there's the nobody lights. there to protect you. Right. And that's the most amazing thing that a sport has to offer. Right. And I think you deserve the utmost respect for what you do. Thank and you. It, it inspires everybody that watches you. Thank you. Including myself. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm explaining. So I heard a rumor that I'd be fighting for the title. Um, and yeah. yes, I got, I got a title fight, um, and we're trying to figure out dates and everything like that. So that's good. I, I, I got what I wanted. This big fat mouth finally got me something. Um, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. So my example is that I want strength regarding the clinch and I want to be able to, you know, lift, lift her up, you know, and Absolutely. just be able to, to slam her down. So, um, over and over again, right? right Not just right. one time. What, you got to keep it going. Yeah. What muscles should I target? Um, and looking around the boxing gym, what sh what can I add to my routine? So I'll just tell you right now. Every day after practice, my first practice in the morning, I do a hundred uh, strict push-ups and um, five hundred sit-ups. And so I'm just doing that. You as, may have to jump on that. Yeah. Right. Well, it's it's we call it I call it prison rules. You know what I yeah, mean? Because it's it. like it's just your own body weight. Um, but I do need to add some other things, and I'm like, do I need to be doing more pull-ups? Should I be, you know, uh, doing deadlifts or cleans? Or I don't even know what all that stuff is. But, um, you know, what can I do so that I can, like, lift her up easier? Like, what muscle do I need to be working on? Like, my back? or? Yeah, of course. I think it's important to just, again, and I know it's a really kind of broad answer. Yeah. But just a really well-balanced program. Because you want to be strong in all angles right. and in all movements. In every plane of movement, you got to be strong. And you got to be well balanced to prevent one part of your body from giving out right. when you're performing something really explosive like that, yeah. right? Like hamstrings got to be good. Your hamstrings got to be great. Your, be your, your glutes got to be, be unbelievable. Exactly. Your core's got to be really stable. So right. then, when someone's trying to impose their force on you, your body's not giving in to what they're trying to make you do. Right. You're able to fight that, right. right? But then you have to have the rotational power to be able to pick something up and throw them where you want to throw them. Right. And realistically, obviously, picking somebody up, right? That's going to be tremendous lower body strength. And from that position, exactly, like, when people think of, oh, well, squats in the gym, full range of motion, it's so important to do everything with the right technique throughout the full range of motion um, so you're strong with fluid movement. But you can also, you know, if you're somebody that has a great foundation in lifting and you're in that clinch position, like, I literally, I'm getting jacked up, so I want to get up and show you right now, you know, like, when you're in that position yeah. and you're in a quarter, uh, a quarter squat position, right, because yeah. you're not all the way down right. when you're in the clinch. Right. That's like performing a high box squat, yeah. right? Like where you're not going all the way down, but you're going to that movement or that motion where you're really comfortable in the clinch and you're developing strength from right there specifically. Right. Now it's important to you know complement that with full range of motion squats and obviously a lot of post chain exercises, you know, glute bridges, RDLs to get you really really strong. Um, because like I said before, you can't just focus on the muscle that you think is being involved because there's a lot more going on. So you gotta be really well balanced to give yourself the best opportunity at completing what you wanna do. Nice, awesome, um, thank you for that. Of course. Um, so what is it like on a Saturday when you're on the sidelines? Cause it looks like you're having the time of your life. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like going back to what I said before, these guys are, they've worked so hard, they prepared for the moment and you know, it's just about watching them go do their thing. 
So it's an experience that you never take for granted. Every day, game day just brings a little bit. It's, it's, it's just a special feeling in the air. Yeah. And uh, it's it's almost like a feeling of well, all the work's already been done. Yeah. And now you're just watching them ball out and have fun. Yeah. And you know if it doesn't work out in our favor, there's always so much that we can get better at. So it's constant motivation more than ever each and every day. Yeah. So on game day, it's just that go get it. It's just attitude. natural. You know, it's just a natural it's that energy. That natural energy. That's yeah. it. So um, every year you guys get a new crop of guys. How do you gel well with them? Like, is there some people that you like more or less? Are you closer with some of the dudes than the other dudes? Like, are you like, how do you um, connect so well with your athletes? That comes into just building relationships, you know, treating others how you want to be treated, respecting one another. And obviously, naturally, when you go through so much work and preparation and you spend so much time together, um, you grow to love each other. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable because we all got the common ground of not only loving football, yeah. but just being genuinely interested and happy about being around one another. You know, it's that, it's that culture, that locker room culture that football brings. Yeah. Um, so when, when guys come in, it's not so much of like, oh, yo, how much do you squat? How much do you bench? Let's get you under the bar. It's more like, tell me more about your family. Tell me more about where you're from. Tell me about what you've done. Where do you want to go? What are your goals? What are your aspirations? Yeah. On and off the field, in and out of the weight room. Yeah. That's what's going to allow you to build a relationship that can accomplish things that are above and beyond the naked eye. You yeah. know? So I really value the relationships that us as a strength staff, myself, have with the players yeah. and with everybody else around me definitely and so I, I think for fighting it's a lot mental too there's a lot of mental aspect that goes into it um, with training these these guys do you ever hear them especially at such a high level that they think that they can't do something and then you, you watch them you know bench something incredible and they are like you know you kind of get them in that moment where you're like you see you're stronger than you thought like do you have any of those types of oh, moments 100 percent. it happens all the time and it, especially it's when guys get really excited about you know playing the nfl one day yeah they talk about that all the time yeah. it's important to have that goal right, right no doubt but it's really important and my my head strength coach jay hooten actually just said this the other day to one of our guys um focus on the now yeah you know and we, we have something that we say at northwestern what's important now win yeah w-i-n and when you're focusing on what's important right now no goal down the road seems too big. No stage is too big for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if I'm thinking about the weight room goals of benching 405, yeah. but I'm only at 315 right now, yeah. you got to get lost in the moment and get to 320. Yeah. Get to 325, get to 330. Follow the plan. Right. Right. Hit your rows, hit your pull-ups really hard because that's going to help you in every single movement possible. That's going to get you stronger in the long run. So it's, uh, it's really cool seeing guys walk in as freshmen at 170 pounds, at 250 pounds and then walk out weighing 300, walk out weighing 215, walk, you know, just tremendous individual strength gains and development, the power, but mentally, like yeah. you said. Yeah. And it's not about chasing a number yeah. that's someone else did a long time ago. Yeah. It's about being your personal best every single day. Nice. Right? Like yeah. when you walked in, what did you do? Yeah. And what were you able to do by the time you left here? What kind of legacy are you leaving behind? Nice, nice. That's crazy. So, I mean, they're used to putting on 10 pounds all the time. They go from 170 100%, oh, 100%. to 100%. Like yeah. As long as it's done the right way. Yeah. Right? And yeah. like like I said before, if you're going hard training, you got to go really hard in nutrition. you got to go really hard in sleeping. Yeah. you got to eat big, lift big, sleep big to yeah. get big. That's what right. you got to do. Right. If you're not sleeping, you know, seven to nine hours, if you're not, you should be getting nine hours of sleep. Yeah. But if you're not, um, and you're not eating consistently, it doesn't matter how much you're lifting. Right. It's not going to get there. Right, right, right. That's a big one for me, I think. I have a really hard time sleeping. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have to take like four melatonin a night, I swear. Um, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, okay, so last question. And, you know, like I said, I'm so sorry. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, but if you could go back in time and talk to 20-year-old uh, Alex Spanos, uh, what advice would you give him? That's a hard one. It's such a hard one. Yeah, it is. So many things. Yeah. Um, I think it goes a little bit back to what we were talking about earlier in yeah. terms of always want more, mm -hmm. always looking at the next challenge, mm -hmm. always looking at what's next, you know, and uh, just being more, 
I mean, I, I like to say that I'm always in the moment yeah. and I'm very appreciative for what's going on around me. But even more so, if I would tell myself when I was 20 years old, 29 now, which is crazy to say, yeah. but I would tell myself, like, really enjoy the times that, that you experience and that you're in right now because the older you get, things happen. And, you know, like I said, with, with Joe leaving us so early and so tragically, it's like, every moment that I've had, I was so lucky to have it, yeah. you know? And it's crazy when you think about it like that. Yeah. So I would definitely just tell myself, get even more lost in the moment, you know? And yeah. then the next thing will take care of itself. You'll dominate that when it comes. Right, that's awesome. So cool. Well, it was a pleasure to, to talk with you here. Uh, where can people follow you? Where can they, you know, get a hold of you, whatever? You got social media, don't you? Yeah, okay. uh, Turbo Strength MU on Instagram. <laughs> And, turbo uh, strength the yeah, NU. Turbo strength on you on Instagram. Okay, what's the NU? And then Northwestern University. Oh, okay, the okay, best, okay. The best. The best. Chicago's Big Ten team. Okay. The best place ever. Yeah. Um, and Alex Panos on Facebook. Alex Panos. But on Facebook. I'm not too active on social media. Okay, good. But uh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. I'm I'm a part of a Big Ten too. Um, the Gonzaga basketball team. Yeah. March Madness. Okay. Yeah, that's where I'm from. So go Zags. It. Um, okay, so, yes. <laughs> go Zags, go catch. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. Okay, so the brand. You guys can catch the brand on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify. Uh, you can follow me at Venezuelan Vixen and uh, Juliana Pena on Facebook. Um, next week's show on the brand, we got special guest Joe Phelan, the director of a business development and the Masters of Boxing guests will be here and joining him. And uh, yeah, we just wanted to give you guys a shout out. If you don't know about Gregory Boxing and Muay Thai, we're here in Des Plaines. Uh, this is an amazing gym. Um, do it. Yes, just do it. They have an amazing beginners program, an do amazing it. and advanced program, and uh, classes on the weekends for you and your kiddos. So please check it out. Alex, thank you again for coming and joining us. Thank you um, so much. Yeah, it was best a, of luck. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and for you as well, and for the Northwestern football team. Go Cats. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Go Cats. Go Cats. I love so, it. I'll catch you guys later. Take care.